Stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never We make a miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, and that is who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
Church, we are so glad to have you here with us today. We believe that God is going to do something great in all of your lives today and that you will be blessed. For the tithes and offering, let's turn our Bible over to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 1 to 4. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. 
for I testify that they give as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely of their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. Despite and in spite of whatever crisis that we are facing right now, may we have the same faith like Macedonians as they never stop giving generously to the ministry of Paul. They give beyond their ability and trust the Lord radically. Have that faith that God will just reward you more than what you asked and expect. Let us pray for the tithes and offering. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to bless you, O God, Lord. God, may you protect those people who will handle your finances. Give them the wisdom they need. I pray, O Lord, that these finances will be used for the expansion of your kingdom. May reach out more souls and people, O God, Lord, to know you more. God, thank you for those people who give their tithes and offering. Bless them, O Lord. Protect them from whatever illnesses, O God, Lord. Give them the strength they need, O Lord God. Thank you. And all glory and honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There are some important updates set for you and your family. The Sea Gentiles for Christ Ministries Church, in its mission to know God more and make Him known, encourages you to take part in God's great work in our city. Keep your spiritual fire burning and do not miss our gatherings. Our Sunday service with simultaneous Facebook live stream is scheduled every Sunday at 2.30 in the afternoon. You may contact Ms. Rosemary Bravo for the reservation of seats. Come and join us as we pray for our nation as a church. Online prayer meeting every Wednesday at 6.30 in the evening. If you can't make it during our prayer meeting, you still can join us on our online intercession that is every Sunday at 6 in the morning. Jam C Online Youth Jam every Saturday from 5 to 6 in the evening. For our Arrow activities, Metamorphosis is scheduled this coming December 4 from 8 to 9.30 in the evening. Also happening on Friday is Diadems at 7 to 8 in the evening. Support a local church activities online by liking, sharing, and interacting on our Facebook and YouTube channel. This is church, this is community, this is See Gentiles for Christ Ministries. See you next Sunday. Surrounded in the world by rampant immorality, 130,000 babies were aborted today. Sex trafficking, a $58 billion industry worldwide. Some cultures abusing distinctions between male and female, other cultures ignoring distinctions between male and female. Over a billion people live and die in desperate poverty. Though I would like to insulate myself from these statistics, they represent realities. James says, if there's no mercy in your life toward the orphan and the widow, if you're living according to the ways of this world, and if you don't have a tight rein on your tongue, your religion is a sham. It's worthless. We must speak clearly and biblically and boldly on these things. A global, God-exalting, passionate idealism is exactly what is needed in the Church of Christ today. 
You can't know this king and be silent about this king. We're compelled to live out our faith in him, to apply our convictions from him in every facet of our lives. It may cost us at work. It may cost us in our community. It may cost us according to the government. But we obey Christ regardless of what it costs because we fear God more than we fear men. Let's live differently in the world around us. Let's turn things upside down because we want His gospel to spread to the nation. We want His glory more than we want life itself. We are ending our series on counter culture. So for two months, no, tumakbo yung series natin sa counterculture. That there are observations, there are practices na minsan dahil marami na ang gumagawa, akala natin yun ang tama. And so as a church, we want that we are standing firm on what the Word of God is saying. As we are coming to an end, we would like to praise and thank the Lord as a church that in response to one of our series, di ba, kinaklaro po natin na as a church, hindi pwede ang nagsasama ng walang kasal. Hindi pwede living it. And so in response, we have made an avenue Kung saan we are holding a mass wedding. So on the first Saturday of December, ayan, we have 10 couples po from our community churches and Bible studies who will have the blessing of the Lord in marriage. Oliver, rejoice, rejoice. We see the alignment of the life of the people of God to what his word is saying. And so as we continue this afternoon, na announce yung title natin, so yes, as we are ending, we want to live in a state kung saan the Lord is always welcome sa buhay natin. And this afternoon, we're talking about counterculture, brokenness. Sa mundo na nagkikrave ng gratification, pleasure, and fulfillment, lahat ng anong gusto talagang i-desire na i-fulfill, not necessarily according sa will ni Lord. Sa ganitong klaseng mundo, sa ganitong klaseng kultura, the word brokenness is a foreign term. But those who follow Jesus do not belong to this world. And the word brokenness is something familiar to our Savior. Not just familiar, but experiential. So if this word is familiar and experiential to our Savior, it should then be for us followers of Christ. Shall we pray? We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Sa mga nanonood online, your presence, Lord, covers exactly where we are right now. And Lord, we pray na ang iyong salita ay hindi lang basta maririnig kung hindi maisasagawa. So, come Holy Spirit, be enthroned in our life as we crown continually Jesus King ng aming mga buhay for the glory of our Father in heaven. Amen. In Judges chapter 21, verse 25, In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. If we're going back no, sa story after Moses, there was Joshua, after Joshua, judges na. So, hindi talaga yung pinaka uh, mahabang time. One time this one judge, another judge, another judge. So, may pinapadala lang si Lord at a certain moment. So, because there was no king, everyone
one did what was right in his own eyes. Remember, no, I preached about uh, Esther, di ba? The word of the king becomes the law of the land. Hindi siya pwedeng mabago dahil ang hari ay hindi nagkakamali. So, kapag walang king, and that was what happened to Israel during the time of the judges, there was no king. Walang certain law, walang certain direction, walang specific commands. People were worshipping the way they want. People were doing things according to what he sees, to what they see fitting before their eyes. Dahil walang king. And so, kapag walang hari ang buhay natin, we become the captain of our own ship. We become the master of our own life. Ang trono, hindi nababakante. Ang buhay natin, ang trono ng buhay natin, hindi nababakante. Talagang may nakaupo dyan, whether we like it or not. Now, how or when can we live? When do we say that we are living in a state of brokenness? Pag sinabi natin brokenness, again, no, ang ating working definition ng brokenness ngayong hapon, ito yung estado ng ating buhay, kung saan, ano ang sinasabi ng Diyos, yun ang nasusunod. Kung saan, ang matatawag natin na uh, talagang available tayo sa lahat ng panahon kapag ang Diyos ay may sinabi o may inutos sa atin. So, mas pag-uusapan natin yan ngayong hapon. So, when am I in a state of brokenness? Kailan ba ako palaging God is available? I mean, I am available for God to use me. I will always be ready na kahit itong gusto ko, kahit gusto ko, pero sabi ni Lord, hindi. Yun ang masusunod at sinabi ni God. So, when am I in a state of brokenness? Our text this afternoon is in Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So, I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Three things, church. When am I in a state of brokenness? Number one, when my self-will is shattered. When my self-will is shattered, yung sarili kong kagustuhan, hindi siya ang nasusunod. Sabi sa verse na binasa natin, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Question based sa verse, What happened to our old self? What happened to our old self? Sige nga, sa mga nanonood sa atin online, go ahead and comment it based on the verse. What happened to our old self? Yes, our old self has been crucified. The word crucified symbolizes death. Ang ating daw dating buhay ay namatay. Ang ating daw dating buhay Alam nyo, hindi kakayanin yung buhay natin na i-repair. Yung buhay natin, hindi siya sira na kailangan lang i-repair. Yung dating buhay natin, talagang bulok, kailangan patayin. Talagang beyond repair, 
hindi madala sa repair, kaya kailangan patayin. Kailangan na crucify. So, our old self, together with our self-will, has been crucified with Christ. And if our old self has been crucified with Christ, the Word of God tells us that when we accept Christ as our Savior, when we accept Christ as our Master, He now takes the throne of our life. Kaya, the Apostle continues no, in his uh, letter to the Galatians people, It is no longer I who live. Hindi na ako ngayon ang namumuhay dito. Si Kristo na ang namumuhay sa akin. Ang buhay ko ay nasa kay Kristo. Siya ang aking hari. Siya ang aking Diyos. At siya ngayon ang namumuhay sa akin. The life that we are living is a life that is exchanged. We did not physically die, but Christ physically died. And right now, tayo ang nabubuhay physically, pero ang buhay ni Kristo ang nakikita at ang naisa sa buhay, supposedly, natin. So what happened to our self-will? It is shattered. It is not anymore our own desire. And this is not the culture that the world knows. Because the world knows what you see fit, what is pleasurable for you, what you think is good, what you think is right, what is fitting according to your own eyes, then proceed. But that is not the way the people of God live. Because the people of God do not live according to our self-will now. We live based on the will of our Savior and Lord. We now have a new life, hindi repaired life. Kaya kung nararamdaman mo na parang bakit bumabalik yung dati, naku po, namatay na yung dapat, nagmumulto lang. So, who now lives in us? Is it I? Is it you? It is Christ. And so, listen to this carefully. If it is Christ who lives, would he approve of homosexuality? If it is Christ who reigns in our physical body, in our mind, in our heart, in our life, in totality, if it is Christ who lives in me, would he approve of homosexuality? Would he approve of bisexuality? Would he approve of lesbianism? Would he approve of staying gay? Would he approve of living in? Would he approve of premarital sex? Would he approve of abortion? Would he approve of disrespect to parents and authorities? Would that? Blaise Pascal puts it, People almost invariably arrive at their beliefs, not on the basis of truth, but on the basis of what they find attractive. Ginagawa ng tao ang pagpili ng religion, hindi base sa katotohanan, kung hindi base sa kanyang kagustuhan. It is either the Bible will affect our view of morality or our view of morality will affect our view of the Bible. The question is, kung ating morality, saan natin yung ina-anchor? Saan galing yung own morality natin? Saan galing yung standard of morality natin? That can be another question. And so, we always ask this, we ask this in the past Sunday services. What are you in search of? What are you in search of, my friend? Are you in search of truth or happiness? Because if we are just in search of happiness, you can reject the truth that can actually truly bring you happiness. So what are you in search of? 
Natanong ko din ito last time no sa past preaching. Gusto natin ng katotohanan sa lahat ng aspeto, relasyon, physical health. Gusto mo ng katotohanan sa lahat ng bagay. Ayaw natin ng kasinungalingan. But why is it when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to eternity? Pag ang katotohanan ay masakit, pinipili natin kung ano yung nagpipit sa atin. To my friends who are watching, The Word of God would always invite. And so, sa lahat ng nanonood sa atin online, before we proceed, what are you in search of? Is it happiness or truth? Are you choosing based on your desire? Or are we surrendering our self-will? When we are surrendering our self-will, when our own self-will is shattered, we are living in a state of brokenness. Kung saan, palagi tayong available when God will be speaking. All right. As we proceed, who is the object of your love? Because whether we like it or not, may pagmamahal ang puso natin. Okay? And we always need an object or a recipient of our love. Kapag tinanggal natin yung object of our love, napapalitan yan. Kasi hindi nawawala yung pagmamahal mo. Now, the question just comes, ano ba ang recipient ng pagmamahal mo? Is it self? Or is it God? The answer to that, will make us think if ang will ko ang nasa shutter or nare-reject ko ang katotohanan. In order to uh, explain further, no? so in our slide right now, I, I hope you see it in your slide, no? let me introduce to you Lieutenant Hero Onada. Lieutenant Hero Onada, is a is a member of the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II. In early 1945, no, kung saan natapos na ang uh, World War II. Si etong si Onada pinadala ng Japan sa Philippines, di ba? Kung saan yung uh, Japan and US may conflict. And there was this time na push ng Japan ang US out. But eventually, bumalik ang US, di ba? Sinuportahan ang, ang Pilipinas. And at that time, kukonti na lang yung mga Japanese na natitira. So, nagtago sila sa kabundukan. Nagtago sila. And what happened? Well, uh, forward, forward, forward tayo, no? Natapos na ang World War II. However, Lieutenant Onada did not receive any message na nagsasabi na tapos na ang gera. Kaya, kasama ang ilan lamang niyang, uh, kung tama ang pagkaalala ko, meron lang siyang tatlong soldiers na kasama at nagtatago sila sa kabundukan. Actually, nag a pa rin sila, no? At tinutuloy-tuloy pa rin nila yung kanilang uh, maliitang mga atake sa mga kabukiran. Time came, pinapaalam ng Japan, nagulog doon sa mga sa, sa kabundukan ng newspaper ng Japan na nagpapakita na tapos na ang gera. Okay, umuwi na kayo sa Japan, tapos na ang gera. Alam niyo po, hindi po siya naniniwala. Para sa kanya, propaganda lang yon. Nagpadala na ng letter ang kanyang mga uh, pamilya, hinuhulog doon sa kabundukan with all the pictures. Sabi niya, propaganda lang yan. Kasi kung talagang tapos na ang gera, walang buhay ngayon sa Japan. Kasi kung kahit pa isang Japanese na natira, tuloy-tuloy ang gera. Yun talaga ang ano niya, ang thought niya. Kaya, later on, nagpadala ng mga Japanese uh, people, soldiers, para hanapin siya sa kabundukan. So, nagkita sila, and sabi talaga, tapos na ang, tapos, tapos na ang gera. Hindi talaga siya makapaniwala. Alam niyo ang sabi niya, I will only believe 
Natapos na nga talaga yun. I will surrender. If the commanding officer who sent me here would relieve me of my duty. No other commanding officer yung nagpadala mismo sa akin dito. Fortunately, buhay pa, hinanap nila, and so yun mismo ang nag-relieve ng duty niya. It was then he surrendered to Marcos on March 9, 1974 at the age of 52. For 29 years, nandun siya sa kabundukan dito sa Pilipinas, pinagpapatuloy ang gera na natapos na. What message do we get there? He knows his commanding officer. He knows saan manggagaling ang command niya. Hindi siya nakadepende sa nangyayari sa paligid at sa kultura. Hihintayin niya kung ano ang iuutos sa kanya nung nagpadala sa kanya. That is a great lesson for us, people of God. Do we know our commanding officer like this Japanese man? Do we know our commanding officer? And the other question is, who is your commanding officer? Is it Jesus or is it self? Is it culture? Is it pleasure? So when are we living in a state of brokenness? Number one, when our self-will is shattered. Number two, when my self-reliance is strict. Sabi doon sa message ni Paul, So I live in this earthly body, By trusting in the Son of God, who loved and gave Himself for me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God. Sino ang tinatrust? Jesus. Hindi ang sarili. So it is not just the self-will is shattered, but even our self-reliance is stripped. Yung tiwala natin ngayon, wala sa sarili, wala sa kultura, nandun kang Jesus. At sino yung pinagkakatiwalaan natin? Si Jesus na nagmamahal sa atin. Si Jesus na binigay ang buhay sa atin. Kaya kung ang tanong ay mapagkakatiwalaan ba siya, binigay niya ang buhay niya sa iyo. Kung mapagkakatiwalaan ba siya, iniwan niya ang trono niya sa langit, bumaba sa lupa, naging taong katulad natin para makapag maibigay ang sakripisyo magpapa-appease sa wrath of heavens. Church, we want to live in a constant brokenness. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Hindi yun po palaging umiiyak at palaging malungkot. Ang ibig sabihin, palaging handa pag tinawag at gamitin ni Lord. Palaging bukas ang puso para sa Diyos. And so, this afternoon, Uh, the next thing I'm gonna share, no? Pag sinabi natin ang ating self-reliance is strict, talagang yung ating paniniwala, yung ating tiwala, wala sa ating sarili. So, in a culture that nakikita natin, na palaging ang sarili ang nasusunod, ang sarili ang pinagkakatiwalaan, kaya achieve ito, achieve doon, gawin ito, gawin doon. Brokenness is a counterculture. Brokenness is a foreign word. Kung saan, ang tiwala ay wala sa sarili. Kung hindi, nandun kang Kristo na siyang nagmamahal sa atin. Anong kasing tiwala ang pinag-usapan natin? You want to gratify yourself? You want to to give in to what you desire. Trust God better. He knows what's good for you. So whenever we feel, gusto ko to, kailangan ko to, don't trust yourself. Lord, kailangan ko ba to? Kasi mas kilala mo ako eh. Mas alam mo ako. So our self-reliance is strict. And we put our trust in Christ. And number three, when my soft heart is sealed. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ang sabi ko kung tignan the word, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Background muna tayo, no? Ito yung time kung saan yung ibang mga Jews talagang pinipilit nila na those 
who say they follow Christ should also be circumcised. Okay? So, kaya nagbabanggaan yung mga ano, yung mga disciples ni Jesus. Nagbabanggaan yung mga uh, leaders. First group of leaders na uh, talaga ganito ang mangyayari. So, yung iba pinipilit nila na i-circumcise. But Apostle Paul, di ba? Hindi niya yon pinipilit kasi it is not by law anymore that people would be saved. It is not true the Jewish tradition, but it was true a Jewish man and his name is Jesus. So, ang importante lang talaga ay ilagay ang tiwala kang Kristo. Hindi na siya by law and to be specific, circumcision ang pinag-uusapan dito. So, let's highlight, no? I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Grace. Among the Greek, pag binanggit mo yung salitang grace, ang alam nila, this is about patronage or sponsorship or aid, kung saan yung isang taong walang-wala ay pinoprovide, sinusuportahan. So, among the Greek, they know this word. Okay? So, ito ang kahulugan para sa kanila. Now, basahin ko, no? To Greeks, the word grace connoted generosity. Generosity that demanded loyalty. Wow! For us right now, this is the generosity of God. His grace is His generosity. We are not worthy of heaven, but we are invited to live a life with the Lord for eternity. That is generosity, the generosity that demands loyalty. Kaya ang sabi, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. What does it mean to treat? the grace of God as meaningless. When we are still trying to do things on our own, kung saan nilagay na kung paano ang salvation and tayo namimili. Sige Lord, piliin ko muna itong sarili ko ngayon. Anyway, magdodonate lang ako ng ganito sa church. Ah Lord, tutulong ako ng maraming mga tao. Ah Lord, magiging mabait ako sa area na to. Tayo na ang namimili. We are now trying to save our own self because we are rejecting kung ano yung manner of salvation, which is true, the grace of God. I would like to speak to my brothers and sisters in Christ who are actually at the point of right now na kung saan babalik na lang, posibleng bumalik sa dati mong buhay. Do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Do not think that you can save yourself. Do not ever think that you can work your way to salvation. Let your heart be sealed in softness. Paano mo masasabi na ang puso ay filled with softness pag ang puso ay filled with gratitude? We are the recipient of the generosity of God. And that generosity is actually demanding loyalty. Loyalty to the one who expressed the generosity and not to the culture where we are in. Balikan natin yung Judges 21 verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. My friend, sino ang hari ng buhay mo? Kung tinanggap mo na si Kristo, si Kristo na ang nakaupo sa trono ng buhay mo. Hindi na ang sarili natin. Hindi ang culture kung hindi si Kristo. May hari na ang buhay mo. And for those who are watching and you did not yet make the decision, I hope you do not find us imposing. But I would like to invite you to get to know the Jesus we are talking about. He is actually offering a relationship. Sometimes, no, limitado lang din kami yung mga nakakakilala kay God kung paano talaga siya i-express. Get to know the Jesus we talk about. 
He offers grace, and with Him is truth. May you live a life that is in constant availability, brokenness before God. Shall we pray? Lord, teach us to always surrender our will before you. We do not treat your grace as meaningless. We know we cannot work our way to salvation, but you made a way, O God. So Lord, in response, may we live in deep loyalty before you when you give it all. I declare the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ever-sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit upon everyone, and have a blessed week.